Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story of what if, Naruto has Saitama's powers one punch man, let's see how everything changes if Naruto was off from the beginning. Let's begin now. Chapter 10 After the Battle of the Bridge. Zabuza and Haku decided to stick around for a while. So they went to the inn to stay until the Konoha ninja left. While making periodical trips over to hang out, aka drink in Zabuza's case. In the time Naruto made an interesting discovery. He had been walking around the town when he bumped into Haku. Literally, the two spoke for a little. Then Haku told Naruto they were on their way over to Tazuna's house. Let's go together then. Naruto yelled. The two had walked for a little while longer. When they bumped into Sakura and Sai. Small town, oh. Hey, Haku. Hey, Naruto. What's up? Sakura, hey, Sakura-chan. We're heading to Tazuna's house. Naruto. Mind if we come with you. Sakura, not at all. Sakura-san. Haku, thanks. Sai don't be rude. Say hello. Sakura scolded Sai. Hello, dickless. Hello, flat chest. Pow. Sakura and Naruto watched as Haku stomped past Sai's unconscious body. The two glanced at each other then back at Sai. I thought only you did that, Sakura-chan. Asterisk HMPH asterisk, he got what he deserved. Insulting a woman's body, like that. Wasn't Haku a guy though? Naruto, I say this not to be mean. But, are you stupid or something? No, then, why would you think Haku was a guy? That's what he told me. Naruto said while scratching his head. Sai, never mind, Naruto. Just know that Haku's isn't a guy. How can you tell? I've seen the bandages she uses to cover her breasts. Oh, oh, wow. Naruto, are you fantasizing about Haku's breasts right now? No, of course not. Okay. She chirped. Then she bent down to grab Sai's ankle and began dragging him towards Tazuna's house. I'd hate to have to tell Hinata that she has some competition. She mumbled. What was that, Sakura-chan? Nothing. Don't worry about it, Naruto. The two, three, walked down the road until Tazuna's house came into sight. Yugao, Kakashi, Zabuza, and Haku were standing around the front door, talking. Hey, Yugao-sensei. We're back. Naruto, oh, good. Then we can leave now. Yugao, huh. But the mission isn't finished yet. Naruto, that's what I was just discussing with Kakashi. We are heading back to the village first. He and Team 7 will stay to complete the mission. Yugao. But, why now? Naruto, that would be because of us, kid. Zabuza, huh? What do you mean, Zabuza? Naruto, I asked Yugao if you two would be willing to escort us to Konoha. She agreed under the condition that we go see your Hokage immediately. Zabuza, why are you going to Konoha? Naruto, is there a problem with us going to Konoha, Naruto-san? Haku, no. No. Of course not. I'm just worried is all. You are ninja from another village, after all. Naruto. Technically, only I was a ninja. Haku was never enrolled in the academy. And I happen to be a rogue ninja. As such, I am no longer part of Karigaku's shinobi force. So there shouldn't be an issue with me going to Konoha. Provided no one tries to claim my bounty. Zabuza. That won't be an issue if you're with us. I can bring you inside the village, without issue. And, well, no shinobi with half a brain cell will try to antagonize Naruto. She leaned closer to Zabuza. There was an incident a few weeks ago. I'll tell you about it later. She whispered. Quote dot dot dot. Right. Zabuza, Haku walked over to Naruto and grabbed his hand. Come on, Naruto-san. I'll help you pack. She pulled him inside the house. Hinata's not going to like this. Sakura mumbled. What was that, Pinky? Zabuza, my name is, Sakura. And I said that Hinata isn't going to like this. Who's Hinata? And why should I care what she likes? Zabuza. Sai, Hinata Hayuga, she means. She was a classmate of theirs. And she has a, slight crush on Naruto. Yugao, slight. Yugao sensei, Hinata has more than a, slight, crush on Naruto. And she doesn't handle competition for his affections well. Sakura. I thought they weren't dating. Yugao, they aren't, as far as I know. But, there's a reason none of our female classmates ever asked Naruto out. When we were younger. Sakura, oh, this sounds interesting. Do tell, Sakura. Kakashi. Don't. Don't tell her I said anything, okay. Promise. They all said. Even Sai. Sai, 
When Naruto was about, 10. I think. There was this girl in our class that developed a crush on him. I get that Naruto isn't the sharpest kanai around. But, how have I not heard about this from him, yet? He had to have known, right? Yugao. She never got the chance to tell him. Hinata found out first. Sakura, and. It isn't like Hinata would do anything to her. Quote dot dot dot. That's where you're wrong. Hinata is one of the sweetest girls around. Until you're a threat to her chances with Naruto. Then, she's every bit the kunoichi you are, Yugao sensei. Sakura. What happened? Kakashi who had stopped reading his book. We had a sparring class that day. Just us girls, you know. And Hinata. Hinata challenged her to a fight almost immediately. How'd that go? Kakashi. About as well as you'd expect a pissed off highly trained kunoichi in training versus a civilian born student to go. It was a slaughter. And we all knew why the normally sweet Hinata snapped like that. Sakura. Wait. Hinata. Our Hinata Hayuga. Scarred an entire class of girls, so much. That no one else ever wanted to ask Naruto out. Yugao, or want Naruto asking us out. It's why most of us ignored him. Shivers that girl's scary when it concerns Naruto. Sakura. Laughs. Kakashi and Yugao burst out laughing. Zabuza just looked confused and Sai was still pretending to be knocked out. Though he was shaking from suppressed laughter. What? What's so funny? Sakura. Laughs, that was a good one, Sakura. You had us going for a minute there. Yugao said while wiping a tear from her eye. Chuckle, agreed, best joke I've heard in a while. Kakashi, it's not funny. Hinata is really scary. Sakura. Laughs, sure she is, Sakura. Yugao, growls, never mind. One day, you'll see how scary she can be. Sakura walked into the house. Ah, uh, Yugao sensei. What was that about? Naruto asked as he and Haku walked outside. Chuckles, don't worry about it, Naruto. Sakura was just telling us a story. Are you ready to go? Yugao, yeah, I've already said goodbye to everyone. Naruto, good. Let's go then. Kakashi, no more slacking off. Got it. Yugao. Yeah, yeah, have a safe trip. Kakashi walked back inside. Sai was dragged in as well. Let's go. Ikirakuza awaits. Naruto, Sai, don't you ever think of anything besides ramen. Yugao. What else is there? Quote dot dot dot. Never mind. The four then set out on their journey to Konoha. Ikirakuz. And to get ramen, apparently. Konoha. A week later upon arriving in Konoha. And after getting ramen, the group of four had a meeting with the Hokage. Zabuza explained their circumstances to the Hokage and asked if he could make Konoha his base camp until such time that the Karigakur civil war was over. In return, he would do missions free of charge for Konoha. Hmm. Two more conditions. Hiruzen finally said. Sai, what are they? Zabuza, condition one. You have to be monitored at all times. Quote dot dot dot. Sounds fair. And the other. You have to teach at least one swordsmanship class a week. Provided you are not on a mission. What? Why? You are one of the seven swordsmen of the mist. I would be a fool if I didn't take advantage of this situation. Groan, fine. But no brats. I'll only teach fully trained ninja. Of course. Here is an easily agreed. Now, I just need to find some bounties. Zabuza muttered. Hiruzen reached under his desk and pulled out a small black book. Which he then tossed to Zabuza. That is Kanaha's bingo book. If you bring in any of the ninja in that book. We will pay you their bounty in return. This does not count as a mission and must be done on your own time. Understood. Zabuza slightly bowed his head. Then he and Haku left the room. If you two would excuse me as well. I have another meeting to attend to. Here is an, yes, sir. Yes, Gigi. Naruto and Yugao left the room as well. Two days later Naruto was exercising on top of the Hokage mountain when Yugao showed up. Naruto. Yugao, hum. He stopped doing his push-ups to look at her. Oh. Hey, Yugao sensei. He pushed off the ground and stood back up. Naruto, I have a mission outside the village for a few days. So I'm sending you with Kurenai and teammate on their escort mission. Why? Because I don't trust that if I leave you here unattended. The village will be standing when I return. She said in a deadpan voice. Hey. I'm not that bad. Oh, really? She folds her arms. Where were you this morning? Quote dot dot dot. Nowhere. Uh-huh. Then, please explain to me why I got a bill for 15 new Anbu uniforms. Hee <laughs> hee. 
Gotta go meet up with Kurinai Sensei now, bye. He jumped into the air. Snort. I thought that might change your mind. With Hinata Hinata was waiting with her team for this, surprise, person. That was supposed to help them on their first C rank. Scoffs, it's probably someone my father hired to keep an eye on me. She rolled her eyes. She understood her father's worry. After all, she was his, weak, daughter. The worthless heiress. As the elders called her when they thought she couldn't hear. It's not that I'm weak. I just hate hurting people. A rain cloud formed over her head. What's wrong, Hinata-chan? A voice she would recognize anywhere said. Naruto-kun. She looked up to find Naruto standing only a few inches away. Eek. She squeaked. She tried to take a step back to put some space between them. But she tripped instead and fell onto her butt. In front of Naruto. Hinata-chan. Are you okay? Naruto yelled before he grabbed her hand and pulled her up. Hinata was staring at the hand he was holding. He's, so warm. She thought as her face turned really red. Hinata-chan, what's wrong? Are you sick or something? Naruto removed his headband, which let his hair fall down, and touched his forehead to hers. You do feel a little hot, Hinata-chan. Are you okay? He asked. Meanwhile, Hinata's brain was short-circuiting. He said I was hot. Naruto-kun thinks I'm hot. I mean, she's technically correct. Naruto-san. A voice interrupted them. The two of them glanced over. Hum. Oh. Hey, Haku. What's up? Naruto greeted her. I'm on my way out with Zabuza-sama. Mind talking with me while I wait? She asked. Sure. He smiled. Then walked over to where she was standing. Meanwhile, inside Hinata's mind. Who's that f asterisk 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 g skank thinks she's talking to, huh? Haku laughs at something Naruto says and places her hand on his arm. That's it. I'm going to kill that asterisk 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 due to the nature of her thoughts. They have been censored for your protection. Thank you for your understanding. And we now go back to your regularly scheduled program. All right, team, and Naruto. Are we ready to go? Kurinai asked as she walked up with a dark brown-haired man. Yes, Kurinai-sensei. They answered. Good. This is Shibuki-san. He is our charge for this mission. Any questions? Where are we going, Kurinai-sensei? Kiba Takigakur. The village hidden by waterfall. Any more questions? Will there be fighting? Hanada. No. At least, I don't think there will be. Kurinai. Disk asterisk Hanada's mad. Any more questions? No. Alright, team. Move out. After walking for 10 minutes. Hanada couldn't hide her curiosity anymore. S. Sonaruto kun. W H, who was that? Hm. T H. That G. Girl you were talking to. Oh. That's my friend Haku. She's great. Snap. Hinata-chan. Oh. It, it's nothing, Naruto-kun. Naruto didn't notice the fist-sized hole in the tree Hinata had been walking by. Shino and Kiba sure did though. Kiba slowly walked over to Shino. Hinata's pissed about something. Kiba whispered. Yes, I noticed. Shino, crash. The two looked back to see that the tree she punched. Had fallen over. Let's leave her alone with Naruto for a while. That should calm her down. Shino. Don't have to tell me twice. Kiba two days later Hinata was about to lose her mind. Naruto had talked about nothing but her. Actually, Naruto only mentioned Haku two times after that first conversation. Both times were because Kiba asked about her. Sure, if she was Naruto's teammate. She could understand him talking about her. But, she, wasn't. In fact, Naruto's only known her for two weeks, tops. It's a good thing they were arriving at Takigakur within the next few minutes. Otherwise, Hinata might have strangled Kiba to get him to stop asking about her. Welcome to Takigakur, everyone. Shibuki, Shibuki-sama. A girl wearing a white kunoichi outfit. With layered green hair and orange eyes ran up to the group. Hello, Fu. What are you doing out here? Shibuki asked. I came to see you, Shibuki-sama. She smiled at him, though her smile dropped a bit when she saw the others. It quickly returned. Hi, I'm Fu. What are your names? Kurinai Yuhi, Jonin of Konoha. Kiba Inazuka, Jenin. Hello. 
And this is Akamaru. Say hi, buddy. Arf. Kiba waved. Sofu waved back. Naruto Uzumaki. Jenin. Nice to meet ya. Your eyes are pretty. Naruto said causing Fu to giggle. Creaking sound. Hinata Hayuga. Pleased to meet you. Hinata said with a strained smile. Shino Aburame. Jenin. A pleasure to meet you, Fu-san. Fu stared at Shino for a few seconds then she took a step closer to him and sniffed the air. Did you know, you smell like a bug? She asked. Sigh, I'm aware. Giggle, I like you. Want me to show you where some rare bugs live? Quote dot dot dot. Sure. She grabbed his arm and pulled him into the village. Groan, I'm sorry about that, Yuhi-san. Fu is a bit, different. The other ninja looked at Naruto. What? Nothing. The group continued on into the tunnel that hid the entrance. Then the group came to a large waterfall. I'm sorry about this. But. Please turn around for a moment. Of course. Kurinai nodded. The leaf ninja all turned around. Shibuki ran through 20 hand signs before yelling. Kai. The earth rumbled a bit and the waterfall parted for them to pass. The group was walking down the path further into the village. When a group of children ran up to Shibuki. Shibuki-sama. Hello, what are you doing out here? Isn't the academy still in session? The youngest of the children who looked to be about four shook her head. We were told to pick up trash. Trash. The oldest one stepped forward. He who looked to be about ten. There was an intruder earlier. They made a mess near the entrance. An intruder. Was anyone hurt? No Shibuki-sama. The intruder didn't make it to the village. They were chased away before they could. I see. He turned to Kurinai. I'm sorry about this, Kurinai-san. Would you mind accepting a mission to help these children? I don't want them going out unguarded. That's fine. The payment can be sent later. Sigh. Thank you, Kurinai-san. Children, show the nice ninja where the mess was made. And they'll help you. Understood. Yes, Shibuki-sama. Team 8 plus Naruto followed the children back through the tunnel. And around a path a ways. Until they came to a destroyed section of road. Here it is. We're supposed to clean up in this area so our ninja can repair it with earth jutsu. The group had been helping to clean the area for a few hours when they decided to take a lunch break. Shino also returned. Though his face was suspiciously red. N. Naruto-kun, W. Would you like to eat lunch with me? Hanada, sure, Hanada-chan. Naruto, Hanada offered to share her lunch with Naruto. He declined on the grounds that all he had to give in return was ramen. I know not many people like ramen the way I do. And I would feel bad if I just ate your food, Hinata-chan. B, but I do like ramen. You do. Yes, E, ever since I went with you to I, Ikirikus. She conveniently forgot about Shino, huh? Yada. All right, Hinata-chan. Naruto dumped out the contents of his bag. Inside was over 10 different flavors of ramen. Pick whichever one you'd like, Hinata-chan. Naruto said with a blinding smile across his face. Whistling sound Hinata's head started to steam from Naruto's smile. Huh. The water shouldn't be boiling already. Naruto looked around for the source of the sound. Oh, well. Must be hearing things. A few minutes later, thank you for the meal. Hinata and Naruto were just about to start eating when the ground started to shake. The shaking got so bad that Hinata accidentally dropped her ramen. Causing it to spill out onto the ground. Quote dot dot dot. I'll be right back, Naruto-kun. Hanada activated her Byakugan for a second before running off into the woods. Hanada-chan. I have more ramen. Naruto yelled. Hanada ran through the woods, into the tunnel and dove through the waterfall into the village. From there, she followed the sounds of fighting. And her Byakugan, until she came across Shibuki fighting against four ninja. Hayuga-san. Go get help. Please. Shibuki yelled. Hanada stood there for a few seconds with her hair covering her eyes. Which? Which one of you made the ground rumble like that? The ninja with gray hair stepped forward. What's the matter, brat? Did it scare you? Laughs. You caused me to drop Naruto-kun's ramen. Her head tilted to one side. So what if I de-wo? He had to duck as Hanada had leapt at him. Her Byakugan blazing in anger. All right, ya little brat. Let's play. He summoned a water whip. Crack he swung it at Hinata's legs. She jumped over it and dashed at him. 8 trigrams, 64 palms. She furiously attacked his tenkutsu. Any time one of his partners tried to help him. She either dodged around them or hit them back. Until he finally collapsed. 
The female ninja attacked Hinata next. She also attempted to use a water whip. And it failed just the same. 8 trigrams, 32 palms. She was also incapacitated. Panting, I have been trying for years to work up the courage to ask Naruto-kun to have lunch with me. And. You. Ruined IT. She cracked her knuckles and advanced on the two remaining ninja. Gulp the two glanced at each other. You hold her off. I'm going to get the hero water. Hey. You bastard you can't just leave me here. Hanada's eyes tracked the fleeing ninja. Oh. No. You aren't getting away after ruining my date lunch with Naruto-kun. She ran quickly ran through hand signs. Water style. Water needle jutsu. A water vortex formed around her. From which a multitude of needles was fired at the runaway ninja. Gah. Each needle fired hit a tenkatsu point. Rendering him unable to move. Her eyes focused on the remaining ninja. Nervous chuckle. Would it matter if I apologized? Yes. I'm sorry. So very sorry. He quickly bowed his head. Thank you. Hanada said with a smile. Then he was assaulted with water needles. Also rendering him unable to move. Content sigh. Phew. I had more stress built up than I thought. Hanada said as she went on her way. I hope Naruto-kun has more ramen. Shibuki, who had been forgotten about, was terrified. That. She. They were Jonin. Was all he could get out. Before he passed out from his injuries. Shibuki-sama. The other ninja arrived to help him. Back with Naruto Hanada had returned to see that Naruto had made her another bowl of ramen. There you are. Hanada chan You ran off so fast that I thought I'd done something wrong. Giggle, no, you didn't do anything wrong, Naruto-kun. I just had some, trash, to throw out. Hey, Hanada chan you didn't stutter the time. Naruto cheered. He grabbed her hands and spun her around in celebration. Hanada was so happy Naruto was holding her hand. That she passed out with a smile on her face. Huh. Hanada chan Hanada chan About 30 minutes later. Fu arrived. Hey, hey, Fu. Naruto yelled. Hello, the rest said. I was asked to inform you. That your mission has been completed. Shibuki Sama sends his regrets. But he cannot show you off himself. So he sent me to do it. She walked with the group about a mile from the village before pulling Shino aside. Bye, Shino-san. I'll see you soon. She winked at him. Before leaving the group to find their own way home. The other leaf ninja looked at each other then back at Shino. Alright, Shino. Arf, Kiba and Akamaru, chuckles. Good going, Shino. Kurenai, see, congrats, Shino. Hanada, huh. What happened? Naruto, group sigh, nothing, Naruto. They all started walking away. Shino was actually grateful that Naruto had distracted them. What? Hey. What did I say? Chapter 11 Hokage's Office Knock. Knock hears and looked up from the mission report he was going through. Yes. Hokage-sama, Naruto Uzumaki, is here to see you. His assistant said through the door. Ah. Send him in. He opened one of his desk drawers and pulled out a file labeled, Uzumaki. The door opened and Naruto was shown in. He walked up to Hiruzen's desk and saluted. At ease, Naruto. Hiruzen. You wanted to see me, Gigi. Naruto, Hiruzen leaned back in his chair and looked at Naruto. Then, he opened the file and began reading through it. Subject has shown incredible physical prowess. Capable of at least Jonin levels of strength and speed. However, his true strength and speed are unknown. As he has never been seen to struggle in doing his, feats. Even when he used a move dubbed as the, serious knife hand, which destroyed over three miles of woodlands. And killed several hundred mercenaries. True number unknown. He only seemed to put minimal effort into his blow. His chakra did not fluctuate before or after its use. As such, I conclude that he is capable of much more destructive feats than he has allowed me to observe. Hiruzen looked back at Naruto. Gigi, what was that? Naruto, that was an excerpt from Yugao's regular Jonin report on you. Hiruzen, she's been spying on me. Naruto asked. He seemed to be slightly hurt from this discovery. No. It's standard procedure. Every Jonin sensei must file this report once a week. It's used to help me understand where their student is, skill-wise. Hiruzen, oh. What else does it say about me? The hurt seemed to have faded a bit after Hiruzen's explanation. Now he's just curious. It also says. And this is a direct quote. 
Naruto is ready, in my opinion, to be advanced to the rank of Chunin. At your discretion, Hokage-sama. Here is an, Yada. I'm going to be a Chunin. Naruto jumped into the air in celebration. Chuckle. Not so fast, Naruto. Here is an, huh. Naruto stopped celebrating. It says, at your discretion, Hokage-sama. And I don't think you're ready, just yet. Here is an, ah. But Gigi. Naruto. There is a way you can prove to me that you are ready, however. Here is an said. A small smirk formed on his face. Name it, Gigi. I'll do whatever I have to. Naruto, laughs, I had a feeling you would say that. Hiruzen stood up and walked over to a storage room adjacent to the office. Follow me. He called. Naruto jogging to catch up. You are aware the Chunin exams begin next week, yes. Hiruzen, yeah, Yugao sensei told me about it a few days ago. Naruto, good, that saves us some time. Hiruzen entered the storage closet and began to look for something. The Chunin exams are, problematic. Here is an, how so? Naruto, as they are jointly held between the five great villages. There will be numerous foreign ninja within our walls. Here is an, oh. That could be bad. Naruto. An understatement, if anything. With the arrival of foreign ninja. Old grudges and rivalries are bound to rear their heads. Despite knowing that it could get them in trouble. Here is an, so, they start fights. Wouldn't that get them in trouble with their cages? Naruto. Sigh, no. In fact, the other cages usually encourage them to act out their aggression. Here is an, what? Why would they do that? Naruto, because, years ago. Back when the villages first signed the treaty that allows any village not currently engaged in war with the hosting village to join in their Chunin exams. A rule was put into place. Here is an, what kind of rule? Naruto, a rule that stated, there it is, that the hosting village gets to enforce their own rules. As long as the ninja involved are not seriously harmed in the process. The foreign cage will not interfere in their punishment. Hiruzen pulled a medium-sized box off a shelf near the back of the storage closet. And motioned for Naruto to follow him back into his office. What does this have to do with me? Naruto, I'm getting to that. You see, usually, the Anbu handle our security. This time, however, someone else will be our security. Hiruzen sat the box down on his desk and opened it. Who's that? Naruto, Hiruzen stepped to the side to allow Naruto to see inside the box. Inside was a blank face mask and gray vest. You. Hiruzen, what? Naruto yelled. His eyes getting comically big. I said. You are our security, this year. Hiruzen got a very scary smile on his face. Naruto Uzumaki, I'm giving you my express permission to. His smile got even bigger almost to the point of splitting his face. Prank the living hell out of anyone. Who dares step out of line in my village? Realization dawned on Naruto. And he grew a similar smile to Hiruzen's. Consider it done, Gigi. Naruto, chuckle, that's my boy. A week later team 7 through 10 had all arrived at the academy. With team 9 arriving first and 7 last. So, we're all here, huh? Sakura, yep. You nervous, forehead. Eno, not as much as you are, Eno pig. The two started glaring at each other. Yosh, ladies. Please, there's no need to fig. Leap, stay out of it, bushy brow. They yelled. Sigh, so your team has an annoying girl too, eh? Shikamaru asked Sasuke. HNN. Sasuke nodded. Hey, she's the annoying one. They pointed at the other. Snicker, hey, check out the comedy act. A stone ninja pointed out the Konoha rookies. Several other ninja teams looked as well. A few snickered, some outright laughed. But most just ignored them in favor of focusing on the trials ahead. The ones who did mock the rookies soon earned their ire. You better watch your mouth. Or else. Growl asterisk Kiba the rock ninja swaggered up to the Konoha ninja. Sure in his ability to win in a fight. They were still kids while he was almost 17. Or else, what? He glared at Kiba. Hey, Naruto. A little help here man. Kiba asked after noticing just how big the guy was. When he didn't get a response. He started looking around. Which caused the other rookies to look for him as well. Speaking of. Where is Naruto? Didn't he qualify for Chunin as well? Ino, Munch. Of course he did. He's probably just running late. Choji, I don't know. I overheard Yugao sensei and Kurinai sensei talking the other day. They said Naruto was doing something else instead of participating this year. Shino. 
Ga. Ino grabbed her chest. Shino you scared me. How long have you been here? A rain cloud formed over Shino's head and he started drawing circles on the floor with his finger. Hanada was patting his back. I, Ino-san. T, that's mean. Shino-san came with us. Hanada, oh. Sorry, Shino. Ino, it is fine. I'm used to it. The cloud grew bigger. Hey, stop ignoring me, you brats. The stone ninja yelled. He decided to take his anger out on Kiba. Who was the closest? By swinging his fist at Kiba's head. Pat suddenly a ninja wearing a blank mask and a gray vest appeared between the two and caught the stone ninja's fist. No. Bad ninja. The masked ninja said before he flicked the stone ninja on the forehead. The impact sent him flipping backward and into a wall 10 feet away. Mostly unharmed. Silence followed Naruto's appearance. Though, only the rookies recognized him because of his hair sticking out. Let that be a lesson for all of you. Don't attack each other unless told otherwise by a proctor. A trench coat wearing ninja appeared. Hey. You can't let him get away with that. One of the other rock ninja yelled. Oh, and why not? He attacked my teammate. Your teammate broke the rules. He has been punished accordingly. Who are they to decide punishments? They are this year's security force. Anyone caught breaking the rules will be dealt with by them. Laughs, this little brat is a security force. What's he guarding? A preschool. This caused a majority of the other contestants to laugh. Minus the sand team. I'd be careful insulting them if I were you. That, little brat, has a bit of a temper. Is that so? Alright. A sound ninja said as he was walking up behind Naruto. He swung his fist in a backhanded motion and hit Naruto on the side of his head with his gauntleted arm. But Naruto didn't move as he expected him to. Shouldn't have done that. The ninja inside the room all looked at the voice. Shouldn't have done, what? The sound ninja asked. Ya shouldn't have pissed him off. Sasuke said from his, and the other rookies, spot on the other side of the room. A. The sound ninja asked. Right before Naruto's arm shot out and grabbed him by the face. He said. Ya shouldn't have pissed me off. Naruto, and the sound ninja, vanished in a burst of speed. Where'd they go? Another sound ninja yelled. Only to be surprised when his teammate was returned only a few seconds later. Covered in glue and feathers. With a rubber beak fastened to his nose. Ah. The ninja started to freak out. His teammates rushed over to calm him down. To no avail. He just kept repeating, so, much, orange. Over and over. The ninja all stared at him wondering what could have possibly happened in the few seconds he was gone. That's the second lesson for you. Don't piss off our security or you'll end up like him. Now, sit down and shut up. Ibiki yelled. Causing everyone to quickly find their spots. Even the panicking ninja. Now, my name is Ibiki Morino. And I am the first proctor. Ibiki started walking around the room. My assistant will pass out these two sheets of paper to everyone. You are not to flip them over until I say so. Failure to comply will result in punishment. The other ninja shivered and the sound ninja screamed. Once I give you permission to begin, you will have 20 minutes to complete the provided questions. When you get to the final question, do not answer it until I say so. Is that understood? Yes. They all shouted. Good, your time starts now. Begin. This part is just like canon. Without Naruto's intervention, so we'll skip ahead a bit. After the first exam crash, a window exploded inward, and a smoke bomb went off. Suddenly, a sign was hung up on the wall at the front of the room that said, The sexy, and single, Anko Mitarashi. And then in little orange letters, it said, Blasphemer against ramen. Naruto. You damned brat. One day you'll forget about ramen and accept the true food of the gods. Dango. She screamed. The blank masked ninja reappeared for a second, flipped her the double bird, then vanished again. Just you wait, brat. I'll draw you over to my side one day. Anko, sigh, Anko, must you do this now? Ibiki, yes, I must. Naruto, that blasphemer, dared to leave ramen packages all over my apartment this morning. And to make matters worse. He, he, she started to tear up. The other ninja were all wondering what Naruto had done to this poor woman. He threw out my dango. She started crying, causing everyone to face fault. Damn it, Anko. Pull yourself together. You have a job to do. Ibiki, but, but my dango. Anko, sigh, if it'll shut you up. I'll buy you more dango right after you begin the next exam, alright. Ibiki. 
Her tears dried up instantly and she continued from where she left off. I'm the second exams, Proctor. Meet me at training ground 44 in 10 minutes or you're disqualified. She vanished in a whirlwind of leaves. The examinees all got up and ran out the door leaving Ibiki alone. I wonder if I can, convince, Yugao and Kuranai to pay for her dango. She is their friend and Naruto is Yugao's student, he wondered while walking out the door. Chapter 12 Inches Training Ground 44 Otherwise, known as, the Forest of Death, is one of the most dangerous places on the planet. And we're sending you brats in there for one week. Enko said while picking her teeth with a dango stick. Quote dot dot dot. What? The gathered genin yelled. Now, now. No need to get so loud. After all, death is only one of the things it's known for. Enko, W. What else is in there? Eno, roar. The ground shook and thunder boomed in the background. There are a few animals in there as well. No worries, though. Our security guard has graciously, volunteered, to go in with you. Should you feel yourself to be in serious danger, she held up a flare. You can fire this into the air. And he will come running. The genin looked at a tied up Naruto sitting on the ground. He had a sign strapped to his chest that said. I will not cause my sensei to lose any more money. Right, volunteered. Then what happens? Lighting ninja. You will be escorted from the training ground. And your team will be disqualified from the competition. So, it's either fail or die. Not much of a choice is there. Grass ninja, you always have a choice. In this case, you have three choices. She held up three fingers. Fight and possibly die. One finger went down. Run away. Second finger, or surrender and fail. Last one. Take a few moments to decide who gets the flare. Once you have decided, that person may come and take one from the table. A few minutes pass by as the genin all talked about who would get the flare. Then a line formed as they received their flares. When you get a flare. Also, take the stack of papers under it. Eno, who had been chosen to hold her team's flare, picked up the papers and began looking through them. What are they for? She asked. Basic legal stuff. They state that neither myself nor Konoha is responsible for any injuries or loss of life that may occur during the course of this exam. She said with a smile. Gulp. Oh. Eno, next, I want all team to line up at the tent off to my right. Inside, you will be given a scroll. This scroll, for the week you are inside, is your life. Do not lose it, and do not open it until you reach your end goal, which is Grass cough Orochimaru cough ninja to take the scroll you need from an enemy team. Then, make your way to the center of the forest. Why there? Rock ninja in the center of the forest is a tower. And this tower will be the location of your third exam. Any more questions? No. Alright, line up and get your scrolls as well as your target. Ah. Uh, Enko sensei, what target? Oh, did I forget to mention that only one team has your opposite scroll. Each team will be told who has the scroll they need. It is then your job. To take it from them by any means necessary. Have fun. She chirped before walking over to Naruto. Come on blondie. Take a bite. She waved a dango stick under his nose. Never. I will not betray my ramen. For the love of God. It's just noodles. Gasp. Blaspheming harlot. You take that back. No. I don't think I will. Admit it, blondie. Dango is just better than ramen. You. You. You bitch. I'll get you back for this. Just you wait. One day, you'll see the error of your ways. And ramen will lead you to the promised land. Dango's better. Ramen. Dango. Naruto gets a smirk on his face. Dango. Ramen. Dango's better, and that's final. No, ramen's better. I agree, ramen is better. Quote dot dot dot. You little shit. Dango's better. The two argued back and forth. While the genin were getting their scrolls. Team 7's target was the grass ninja. That's just unlucky. Team 8's a target was the rain ninja. Team 9's target was the rock ninja. And Team 10's target was the lighting ninja. Ahem. Anko san. The genin are ready to begin. A chunin interrupted Anko and Naruto's argument. The two glared at each other for a few seconds. This isn't over, blondie. Anko. Likewise, ya bloody heathen. Naruto, she walked over and picked up the microphone. All right, the second exam begins in 5.4.3.2.1. Point 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 Go. The gates opened and the teams dashed inside. Quote dot dot dot. You know the rules, Blondie. 
Don't help, unless they use the flare. Anko. Yang. Yeah, yeah. Yu Gao Sensei already told me. Need me to cut you loose. Nah, I'm just a clone. The real me has been in there since you walked off a few minutes ago. Poof. I'm gonna get that brat, one day. Anko. The next day already, three out of the eleven teams had been eliminated. Two teams had arrived at the tower. The team from Suna, Gera, Konkuro, and Tamari. And team 9. Unluckily, one of the teams from Grass had been wiped out except for one survivor. A red-haired girl named Karen. Who, was now resting at the tower under Anbu guard. The reason for her being under guard. The other Grass ninja had been found dead with their faces removed. So, when Naruto brought her in. She was placed under guard for her protection. And so they could question her. Anko, after being called to the scene of the murder, dashed into the forest in search of her ex-sensei. Unfortunately for her, however, Orochimaru was, preoccupied. Yikes. Calm down. What's wrong with you anyway? All I said was the guard had a nice bade. Orochimaru, still in his female guise, was currently running from a really irate, Hinata Hayuga. He had just gotten a sample of Shino's Kikiachu for study. Before he tracked down Sasuke. When he figured he would also try to get a sample of Hinata's blood. Trying to study the Byakugan. He made the mistake of trying to, girl talk, about Naruto. Read his gossip. To distract her. Dot dot dot. Hinata was unamused. Come back here you slippery bitch. Hinata yelled after Orochimaru had managed to slip away from her. Shino. Kiba, yes. I thought she was the timid one. Arf asterisk, Akamaru agrees. So did I. Does she scare you too, buddy? Kiba looked up at Akamaru. Who is inside his hood? Wine, she scares me as well. Shino, with Orochimaru, damn, that Hyuga's kinda scary. Reminds me of that other Hyuga female that was obsessive about Hiyashi chan What was her name, again? An image of a woman with long purple hair flashed through his mind. Shivers, right, her. She's still the cause of some nightmares. Oh, well. Let's go find Sasuke-chan, now. With Team 7 they were running around the forest looking for the grass team. Orochimaru, who is now looking for them as well. When they came to a stop on one of the large tree branches. What's wrong, Sasuke-kun? Sakura, we're going to take a break here. No sense in running ourselves ragged on day 2. Besides, they have to find us as well. Chuckle how right you are, Sasuke-chan. Orochimaru landed on the branch in front of them. Sasuke and Sai got into battle positions while Sakura turned around to guard their backs. Tell your teammates to come out. And we'll do this the right way. Sasuke, chuckle, teammates. Oh, you mean this body's teammates. Yeah. They're dead. Dead. I'm not here for the exam, Sasuke-chan. I'm here for you. Orochimaru yanked the grass ninja's face off and showed his real face. Quote dot dot dot. I take it that means you're not part of the exams. Sasuke asked. That's right. So, you're breaking the rules, right now. Yes, yes. I knew you Uchiha's could be dumb. But are you really so stupid that you need to ask? No, I just wanted to be sure before I did this. Sasuke ran through hand signs. Naruto. We have a rule breaker. Sasuke yelled. Then he sent a massive fireball up into the air. Really, Sasuke-chan. Are you calling for the guard? Where's your Uchiha pride, huh? Orochimaru dashed at Sasuke. Instead of running like he thought they would. Team 7 stood their ground. Fine. Make this easy for me, wham. Orochimaru was tackled so hard the scroll he had in his robe spun in the air for a few seconds. Before falling onto the branch. Neither Orochimaru or Naruto were anywhere to be seen. Sai walked over to the scroll and pocketed it. After making sure it was the one they needed. Let's head to the tower, shall we? Right. With Naruto Naruto had Orochimaru by the throat and he was running the forest. He had been told about him being in the forest by Anko only a few hours ago. So when he heard Sasuke yell about a rule breaker. He had an idea of who it was. He was moving so fast. That, although to Naruto several seconds had passed. Orochimaru still had yet to react. Naruto arrived at the Hokage Tower and dove through the open window. With Orochimaru. Where he finally slowed down enough that Orochimaru could react. What the? What happened? He yelled. He kicked and punched trying to make Naruto let go of his throat. They had no effect on him, though. 
Jiji, I cut a rule breaker in the forest. Saisa I see, Naruto. Orochimaru, what are you doing in my village? Chuckle. Oh. Hey, sensei. Long time no see. You got old. And you got even weirder. I'd rather be old. I'd rather be weird. Same. Naruto, please don't agree with the psychopath. Here is and glared at Naruto. Hee <laughs> hee. Sorry, Gigi. Answer the question, Orochimaru. Why are you here? Hiruzen stood up from his desk and walked until he was nose to nose with Orochimaru. So scary, sensei. It's almost like you're not happy to see me. That's because I'm not. Hiruzen deadpanned. He walked back over to his desk. Naruto. Yes, Gigi. I made a promise to one of my students a few years back. That if I ever saw you again, Orochimaru. I wouldn't kill you. I intend to honor that promise. Naruto, you kill him. Roger that, Gigi. Naruto grabbed the top of Orochimaru's head. While holding his neck with the other hand. Wait, don't kill M. Ripping sound Naruto tore Orochimaru's head from his body. His head and body, burst into flames and a note fell out of his chest. Which Hiruzen then picked up and read. Sorry, sensei. I'm immortal. Be seeing you soon. It had a crudely drawn Orochimaru at the bottom giving them the finger. Sigh. Why did all of my students turn out so odd? I'm not odd, Gigi. Sigh. Why did all of my students and you, turn out so odd? Quote dot dot dot. You must have infected us with your oddness, Gigi. Then Naruto disappeared in a burst of speed. Naruto. Back at the tower the week ended with the passing of seven teams. Teams seven through ten made it. The Suna team passed on the first day. The Sound Ninja passed. And a Konoha team consisting of Kabuto, Masumi, and Yoroi also passed. Though Kabuto immediately forfeited. Wow. Seven teams passed my exam. I must say, I'm surprised. I thought more of you, would have died. Anko. Yes, Anko. Your exam must not have been as difficult as you believed it to be. Ibiki says the guy who let so many genin advance in the first place. What's that say about you, a scarhead? Ibiki glared at Anko. Enough. Hiruzen, yes, Hokage-sama. Hiruzen stood up from his chair to say a few words to the genin. I would like to congratulate all of you for making it this far. Unfortunately. You cannot rest, just yet. Grown, because so many of you passed the first two exams. Your third exam has been delayed until next month. And a preliminary shall be held today. What are we doing, Hokage-sama? Sakura, Hiruzen motioned to a large black board. Two names will appear on this screen. The two chosen will fight until one fighter yields, is unable to continue, or is killed. All contestants must listen to the proctor of this exam, Hayate Gekko. Failure to do so will result in disqualification. Is that clear? Yes. Good. Let the preliminaries begin. Chapter 13 First Match Sasuke Uchiha vs. Yoroi Ikado The two fighters made their way down to the arena floor. You sure you're ready for this, Uchiha? Yoroi, Yan, yeah, yeah, can we skip the bragging and just get this over with? Yoroi snarled at Sasuke. You really should focus, Uchiha. It would be a shame if you got hurt because you weren't paying attention. Yoroi, whatever you say. Hey Proctor, can we get this started already? Sasuke, cough, or both fighters ready? I'm ready to kill you, Uchiha. Sure. Cough, begin. The two dashed at each other. Sasuke's Sharingan was blazing in his eyes, and Yoroi's hands were glowing blue. Yoroi swiped at Sasuke's head, and it was ducked, but it did manage to brush Sasuke's hair. Hmm. Some of my chakra vanished. Sasuke, surprised, Uchiha. With just a touch, I can steal all of your chakra ah. While Yoroi was explaining his ability, Sasuke took advantage and kicked Yoroi between the legs. Hard. Loud squeak Yoroi collapsed to his knees and looked up at Sasuke, who was staring into his eyes. Didn't anyone ever tell you not to talk during a fight? Sasuke, Yoroi nodded yes. He couldn't speak yet. Hmm, you should have listened. Sasuke brought his leg up and kicked Yoroi in the face. He collapsed backward, unconscious. Winner, Sasuke Uchiha. The gathered ninja clapped, if trepidatiously. After returning to his team, Sasuke was approached by Kakashi. That was, a good fight, Sasuke. Thanks, Sensei. Second match. Zaku Abumi vs Shino Aburame They made their way down to the arena. You better give me a good fight, Leaf Nin. Zaku. 
Shino, what's the matter? Are you scared? Leaf Nin. Zaku, cough. Are both fighters ready? I'm ready. Yes, begin. Zaku immediately felt something was wrong, as his chakra was being drained rapidly. What did you do? Zaku, Zaku pointed his arms at Shin and pushed chakra into the holes in his palms. Answer me, you bastard. Zaku, fine then, I'll kill you and figure it out myself. Zaku. Decapitating airwaves. Boom. Screams Zaku's arms exploded into chunks and he passed out from the pain. Silence filled the room as everyone tried to figure out what happened. Winner, Shino Abarame. Shino made his way back to his team. Hey, Shino. Kiba, yes. What did you do to him? I sent my Kikaichu to investigate him after our names were chosen. They found the holes on his palms, and I deduced that they must have had some use. So I had them enter the holes and fill them up. The rest is obvious. Nervous chuckle, right, obvious. Match 3, Masumi Sarugi vs. Konkuro, just like canon, winner, Konkuro. Match 4, Sakura Haruno vs. Tamari, good luck, Sakura. Sasuke, good luck, washboard, pow. Thanks. Sakura said before making her way down to the arena floor where Tamari was already waiting. Sigh, great, I get the pinky. Tamari, hello, I'm Sakura Haruno. It's a pleasure to meet you. She said with a bow. Tamari, likewise. And, nothing personal, okay. Sakura's brow started twitching, but she nodded. Cough, fighters ready. Yes. Begin. Sakura pulled out a kanai and charged at Tamari. Who was taking the fan off of her back? Once I have fully opened this fan, you will lose. We'll see about that. I didn't train my ass off for nothing. Tamari swung her still closed fan at Sakura once she had gotten close, but Sakura slid under it on her knees. Then Sakura came up swinging. Swish asterisk swish Tamari grabbed her arm and threw her away, though Sakura flipped, landed on her feet, and charged back in. The two engaged in taijutsu, and though Tamari obviously had the upper hand. Sakura's recent training was allowing her to hold her own. Pow. A punch Sakura threw had snuck in and caught Tamari on the chin. Tamari shook a little, but then planted her feet and smacked Sakura away with her fan. You're not bad. Tamari opened her fan to the first moon. I could say the same of you. Sakura returned after jumping back to her feet. The two continued to fight in close range, with Sakura trying to ensure she couldn't use her fan, and Tamari wanting to keep her away. Tamari swung her fan again and caught Sakura in the stomach. The blow sent her tumbling back before she slid to a stop, in a crouched position. Tamari opened her fan to the second moon. Is that all you got, Pinky? Tamari taunted. Hardly. Sakura charged back in. This girl honestly isn't bad. A few more years of training and she could become a serious threat. Tamari thought. A few more exchanges passed before Tamari got serious, and she opened her fan completely. Sorry about this, Pinky. Like I said, nothing personal. Wind style. Sickle weasel jutsu. A huge tornado of wind assaulted the charging Sakura and lifted her into the air. Screams. Sakura yelled from the pain of the blades slicing through her skin. She was held there for 10 seconds before the jutsu was cancelled, and she fell to the ground. Call the fight, Proctor. She's done foe, bang. Sakura had used the last of her strength to do one last charge at Tamari, and punch her in the face. The blow sent Tamari to the ground, then Sakura passed out. Tamari stared at her from her position on the ground. Cough, winner, Tamari. Tamari quickly stood back up and walked over to her brothers. You're an embarrassment. Gara said after she reached them. But Gara, I, no. You almost lost to trash like her. You're lucky we still need you, or I would have offered you to mother, already. Tamari felt a chill run down her spine. So, she hung her head and hoped her brother wouldn't ignore orders and just kill her anyway. Next match. Tenten vs Ino Yamanaka. Ino hasn't been training like Sakura has, so she quickly lost. Winner, Tenten. Next match, Shikamaru Nara vs Kintsuchi, same as canon. Winner, Shikamaru Nara. Next match, Kiba Inazuka vs Sai, alright Akamaru. Let's do this, buddy. I forfeit. Kiba, who had been about to jump over the railing, lost his footing and fell to the ground. Cough, are you sure? Yes, I have faced Kiba many times, and know that I cannot win. Very well. Winner, Kiba Inazuka. Next match, 
Neji Hayuga vs. Choji Akamaiki, hem. Neji hummed as he made his way to the arena. Wish me luck, guys. Choji also made his way down. Cough, fighters ready. Yes. Begin. Multi-sized jutsu. Choji expanded himself into a ball, then started rolling toward Neji at high speed. Bullet tank jutsu. Hup Neji jumped over Choji and lightly struck. His finger hit a tenkutsu that caused Choji to lose focus. He then continued to roll until he hit a wall head first and was knocked unconscious. Cough. Ah. Uh. Winner, Neji Hayuga. Neji made his way back to his teammates, and Choji was carried off the arena floor. Next match, Hinata Hayuga vs. Dosu Kinyuta Dosu made his way down to the arena first. Hinata, on the other hand, was so nervous, that she started hyperventilating. Hinata. Kurinai barked. Why? Yes, sensei. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. B, but I do want to. I, I'm tired of being weak. Then let me give you a hand. Kurinai formed a hand sign and Hinata went glass-eyed for a few seconds. Sensei, what are you doing? Kiba, Hinata came out of her trance, her eyes were blazing with fury. You dare. She jumped down from the balcony to the arena floor below. Seriously, what did you do? I showed her something she really didn't want to see. Kiba looked at her confused, but Shino seemed to understand. Sensei, you're cruel. Shino, I know. Kurinai, can someone explain it to me please? Kiba yelled. Simple. I showed her Naruto losing his first kiss to that dosu kid. Loud screamed Kiba, who had his back to the arena. Looked at the faces of those around him, before deciding that he really didn't want to see what Hinata was doing to that poor guy. That was supposed to be mine. Another loud scream, followed by crying, W, W, winner, Hinata Hayuga. Please don't kill me. I haven't had sex with Yugao, yet. Hayate, hey. Yugao, the other Jonin all looked at her. The Jenin did too. What? It's not for lack of trying on my part. He wanted to wait until we were married. She averted her eyes. Uh huh, everyone answered. Due to the graphic nature of the scene, Dosu's body has been blurred out for your protection. Thank you for your understanding. Next match, Rock Lee vs. Gara of the Desert, same as Canon, winner, Gara of the Desert. Gara's sand was still going for Lee, so the Jonin all jumped down and intercepted it. So Gara's sand picked out a new target. Naruto. Who had also jumped down. Naruto stood still as the sand wrapped around him and covered everything except his head. Die. Gara yelled in a manic voice. Sand coffin. Sand funeral. The gathered genin all screamed while the Jonin tried to interfere, but they were pushed back. Naruto. Hiruzen yelled. Yes, Gigi. After hearing him calmly respond. Everyone looked at him and noticed that he was looking around confused. Are, are you okay, Naruto? Kurinai, hum, oh. Yes, I'm fine. It's actually really warm in here. San Funeral Gara tried his jutsu again, but he received the same result. Having trouble performing, eh? Don't worry, it happens to everyone. Well, not to me, but, Naruto, Imperial San Funeral. Even more sand swarmed around Naruto and tried to crush him. Yan Naruto was unimpressed. You done, yet. My legs went to sleep. Loud yell. Sand started to move towards Gara. Run. Tamari yelled. She, her brother, and some of the other genin all moved away from the arena floor. That's when Naruto just walked out of the sand coffin. Yan, I'm kinda sleepy, now. He disappeared from his spot and moved to just behind Gara. Thwack. Naruto bonked him on the head so hard his sand armor broke, and he was knocked unconscious. No, don't if you do that, heal, a loud rumble shook the ground, and Gara's eyes shot back open. I'm free. I'm free, laughs, Gara looked at the surrounding ninja. Die. Smack. Naruto smacked him so hard his face went through the concrete floor and was stuck there. You should really calm down, you'll hurt your throat talking like that. Naruto. The surrounding ninja were all shell-shocked. Though the younger ninja didn't know what had just happened. Besides Naruto doing something weird. The older ninja all recognized it for what it was. He's a Jinchuriki. You sand ninja, I'd like a word with you in my office after this is over. Yes, sir. The Hokage sat back down in his chair. He stood up because he was worried for Naruto. Attention, everyone. The proctor will now allow each of you to pick a piece of paper out of this box. On it, is the name of the opponent that you will face in one month's time. 
Here is an, one by one, the Genin all took a piece of paper. Tamari also took one for Garus since they hadn't disqualified him, yet. Now, starting from left to right. Read out your opponent's name. Sai, Tamari. Shikamaru, Gara, Sasuke, Konkuro. Kiba, Hinata. Neji, Shino. Tenten, good, you are dismissed. Your Jonin instructors will give you the information you need for your next exam. Here is an, everyone filed out of the tower. Except those who were in the medical wing, and the San siblings who were ahem, interviewed, by the Hokage and his Anbu. Thanks for listening I hope you guys liked it don't forget to subscribe and leave a like for more what ifs and support the author, see you guys in the next video.